All right, today we are going to do a midterm review, and I have posted an image on your weekly modules page that you can use uh, to do this review on. And so uh, hopefully you've got that open or you've, you're getting it open now. I'm trying to find mine. There it is. And with this review, what we're going to do is go over uh, the things that I'm going to expect you to know for your midterm exam or midterm review or uh, discussion-based assessment. And we're going to make a little um, review sheet that you can use when you take your assessment. So I'm going to choose my pen because um, I like to write with it. And I'm going to turn it down kind of small because I'm already on a small surface. And we're going to talk first about line. There are three main things that we're going to be talking about on our um, review, on our exam. And the first is line. The second is shape. And the third is color. Line can be straight curved zigzag it might be thick and thin it could be hatch lines cross hatch or even contour lines so let's talk about what these types of lines are first of all let's draw some straight lines here so straight lines are just lines that go straight there we go what about curved lines can you draw some cool curved lines like maybe an s maybe a road that goes back into space Curly cues are like little curved lines. So now we got some curved lines and some straight lines. What about zigzag lines? Can you do some zigzag lines? Zigzag start off in one direction and then they zag back and zig back and forth. Zigging and zagging, zigging and zagging and zigging. Those zigzag lines. So hatch marks are little straight lines that run right parallel next to each other over and over again. Like I might have straight lines here that go in all kinds of different directions and cross over each other. Those are all still straight. But crosshatch look like this. They're right next to each other. And the closer they get, the darker they get, the darker the value they create. Look, if I put them really close together, those little hatch marks, those hatch lines, they get a lot lot darker in value. The further away they are, the lighter they are. Those are hatch marks. Little marks that all go in the same direction. The next type of line that you should draw on your review sheet are crosshatch marks. And crosshatch marks look like this. They go in the same way cross or hatch marks go, but they also have straight lines that come back over in a parallel to each other uh, that cross diagonally over the first lines. So they cross over their hatch lines that cross each other. So they're cross hatch lines. And last but not least, we have what we call contour lines. And contour lines follow the outside object of something so if i draw a person maybe the outside of their head and maybe their eyes and such might look something like this and they've got a nose and their cheek and, and then they're i'm doing what they call continuous contour line and maybe it looks something like that maybe that's what their, their face would look like but it would be a contour line a line that just followed the outside of that contour of that shape. If we did a contour line of an apple, it might look like this. A banana contour line might look like this. So contour lines follow the outside edge of the object. So those are the things that I am going to want you to know about line. It can be straight and curved and zigzag. 
It can be crosshatch or hatch marks or contour. Maybe it can be thin. Let's put thin up here. What if we got thin lines? These are thin. Or what if we had thick lines? We'll write the word thick. And what if the line was like this? Oh, even. Let's go thicker. Yeah. Or even thicker. Yeah, those are thick lines. Thick lines and thin lines. Straight lines and curved lines. Zigzags. Hatch, cross hatch, and contour lines. If you know all those different types of lines, well, you probably know everything there is just about, about line. You'll do just fine. The next thing we're going to talk about is shape. And shape can be uh, a couple different ways. There are a couple different types of shape. First of all, we want to know that it's two-dimensional. Shape is two-dimensional, and it's defined by the outline of an object. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at a geometric object, like a triangle. Try to keep my lines as straight as possible there. Well, when we look at it, that's the outline of the triangle, and that's what defines that shape. That's what makes it a triangle. Circles are geometric shapes. Squares are geometric shapes. These are shapes you might find in geometry class, like squares and triangles and rectangles. Those diamond shapes. Think about the diamond shapes. Those are geometric. So now, what's an organic shape? Well, organic shapes, they're not going to have these regular edges and, and uh, real defined shapes like we see with the geometric. No, they're going to be things like clouds that have really crazy outside outline shapes and trees. Those are organic. And rocks. Rocks are organic. And um, anything that grows is probably going to be mostly organic. We might think of grasses and plants and trees and those types of things. Organic shapes. They have those wild, crazy, undefined edges that... Um, do whatever they want. They're wild and crazy. Organic shapes. So make sure you know what a ge geometric shapes are like circles and triangles and squares. R organic shapes are those fun, wild, crazy shapes. Now, the element of art that is probably the most complicated is that of color. So let's talk about color. First of all, let's talk about our three primaries. The first one that we're going to use, and I'm going to put on my marker here. I'm going to color this one. Our first primary color is red. Let's, let's, let's color that in. And you may remember the songs we heard about red. And so red is our first one. Our second primary color is yellow. So let's color this little next one yellow. So we'll know what those are. Red and yellow. And does anyone know what the third one is? Oh, oh, oh I put that on the red there. I maxed it. And the last one is blue. And I'm going to pick that pretty blue to do this. All right, so now we've got red, yellow, and blue. If you remember, we did a make day where we made a color wheel and we mixed colors. And if you remember, we mixed like red. And let's put red here. And we mixed red. I remember mixing it with yellow. So let's put on the other side of that plus, like if we're mixing red and we put plus, red plus yellow. There we go. Oh. 
Do you remember what that makes? Well, absolutely, that makes orange. Red plus yellow makes orange. Red plus yellow makes orange. And then if you remember, we mixed yellow with blue and do you remember what we got if you said green you're absolutely correct so i'm gonna pick my green here that's a nice pretty green and i'm gonna put my green here All right, and then we mixed our blue with red. So now you want to be picking your colors and coloring these in so yours has the same color that mine has. Do you remember when we got when we mixed blue plus red? That's correct. We got purple. <clears throat> so the primary colors mix together to create and blend and make our secondary colors. So our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Our secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. Awesome. Now you're definitely need to, going to need to know your primary and your secondary colors. I am definitely going to ask you about that. So what are those warm colors? Well, warm colors are going to be any of those colors that look like they could be fire reds and yellows and oranges all of those that look like they could be part of fire and if you want to you can make it even look like fire all of those bright reds and yellows and oranges those are all warm colors i'm just gonna put mine all together that's look at all those warm colors those are those warm colors what about cool colors, though? Boy, we've got a lot of cool colors. We've got greens. That's a cool green. Look at that. In addition to greens, we've got blues. Blues are cool. Look, that blue looks like ice. It's very cool. And even those purples. Those purples can be really, really cool. So our warm colors are things that look like they could be uh, fire, reds and yellows and oranges. Our cool colors are those blues, those greens, and those purples. Now we mentioned that if we add, uh, if I take a color like purple, and I add to it, Let's just say I add a little bit of white. I'm just going to make a little square there. Right? It'll make a very light purple. Because that dark purple plus white equals light purple. And when we add white to a color, we get a tint. So if I have red and I add white to it, I get pink. If I take blue and add white to it, I get a real pale blue. Those are tints. Shades, however, are when we take that, that blue. Let's go back to that blue. What if we did that blue? And we added 
not white, but this time black. Well, blue plus, plus black, that's going to give us a dark blue. So I'm going to go to my custom selector and choose a dark blue. And that's going to make a dark blue. And if I took my red, oops, let's go back to my original color palette. And I add a little black to it. I get that dark red. I guess I should show my original red shit now. And if I take, let's say, that yellow even. And I add black to that yellow. Well, it gets darker too. So we have what we call tints and shades. When we add white to a color, we get tints. When we add black to a color, we get shades. So just quickly to review, here are the most important things you need to know for your discussion-based assessment for your midterm uh, exam next week. For line, you want to know it can be thicker, thin, straight, curved, zigzagging. It can have may make hatch marks or cross hatch marks. And those lines that follow the outside object of an object, the outside outline of an object, those are called contour lines. We've got geometric shapes like triangles and circles and rectangles and squares. Even this diamond, they all have fairly regular sides very well-defined um, shapes and edges. But those organic shapes, oh, those are very ill-defined shapes. Those edges do whatever they want. They're crazy. Those are things like trees and clouds and plants. You know, need to know that your primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. You need to know that when red and yellow mix together, they make orange. When yellow and blue mix together, they make green. And when blue and red mix together, they make purple. You need to know that orange, green, and purple are those secondary colors. You need to know that the warm colors are reds and yellows and oranges. And that the cool colors are blues and purples and greens. You should also know that when you add white to a color, you get a tint. And when you add black to a color, you get a shade. <clears throat> if you know all of that, you're going to do just fine on your discussion-based assessment. I look forward to seeing you in your discussion-based assessment, and we're going to talk briefly here about what that's going to look like.